After the major success of the first portable Mario platformer that was Super Mario Land, it was inevitable that there was more to come. Three years later, in 1992, Super Mario Land 2, the six golden coins, hit the shelves, and the rest is history. The sequel would go on to be viewed exponentially greater than its predecessor, and with a greater game, comes an even greater speedrun. Unlike Super Mario Land's somewhat short speedrun history, this game is quite different. Based on the Super Mario Land video, clearly, you all want more. Strap in, because today, we are going to be diving into Super Mario Land 2's long speedrun history. It's time for Star Song. Yeah, everyone get hyped. <laughs> If you know the words, sing along. It's the star song, the funky star song. It's the star song, that funky star song. It's the star song, the funky star song, it's the star song. Having over twice the amount of levels as the original game, eating Super Mario Land 2 in one sitting is quite a big demand. In total, the game has 32 levels, but since this is speedrunning we are talking about, not all levels are always required. The fastest any percent route throughout the game would stroll past 22 levels throughout the different zones. This run consists of 6 different zones that consist of 6 different themes. Tree Zone, Space Zone, Macro Zone, Pumpkin Zone, Turtle Zone, and Mario Zone. These different zones can be played in any order the player wants. This preference will change over time as we talk about future runs. The beginnings of this speedrun, like most games, is a bit harder to find. When in doubt though, Speed Demo's archive generally gives us the first glimpse into speedrun attempts of a game. On December 27th, 2005, a player by the name Aqua Tiger would submit a 32 minute and 6 second speedrun of the game onto the website. Like any old speedrun, I do apologize for the low video quality. Be grateful for technology advancements over the past decade. Anyways, Aqua chose the order of Turtle Zone, Mario Zone, Pumpkin Zone, Macro Zone, Space Zone, and lastly, Tree Zone. For a first run, this was quite impressive. Taking advantage of the flower and bunny power-ups as much as possible, Aqua in the comments noted that they insisted on a no-death run. This alone set a huge precedent for the category considering the amount of levels and the length of the run. He also left notes about specific levels in the run, such as going to the secret and macro zone. He explained that despite the fact that the level is auto-scrolling, he is convinced it is faster than doing the normal macro zone 2 and 3 levels. Aqua would be correct in the statement, and records throughout the years would continue to do this. There were also many comments about why they grabbed different power-ups in different levels. The flower and the bunny power-up serve different advantages in different situations. Besides taking a few hits and losing these power-ups, for 2005, this was quite an impressive run. After 2005, it's quite hard to pinpoint the next step in the game's history. There are a couple conflicting times that have been claimed around 2012, but these claims don't seem to have any supporting video evidence. For example, on Carl Sagan 42's 2802 PB in 2012, he claims in the description that he wants to beat the world record that is 27 minutes and 54 seconds. To this day, there is still no footage or proof in the slightest of this time. A lot of this stems from the fact that Japanese speedrunning communities used to be very separated from the rest of the community, and many times did not properly record footage for these runs. 
If anyone somehow has proof of these runs, I'd be more than happy to hear. There wouldn't be a proper provable record until March 30th of 2012, when Mug 1991 achieved a 2732. This would mark the properly recorded beginning of this category's history. Unlike Aqua's run, Mug started in Tree Zone. Mug would continue to have consistent gameplay, only missing little jumps and making tiny mistakes here and there. Something I should note as well before we continue is that in this game, taking damage can sometimes be a good thing. Both losing and grabbing power-ups are not nearly as much of a worry in this game compared to many other Mario games. For example, during this run in Pumpkin Zone, it seems like at the time that Mug thought it made more sense to take damage in the level and quickly grab power-ups again later. Finishing out the run on a good note, as well as beating some of the unverified Japanese times, Mug was now officially the world record holder in Super Mario Land 2. This would be the start of a new chapter in the game's life. Just a couple weeks later, on January 26, Mug achieved a new record with a 2744 time. Mug was able to save time from minor optimizations throughout the run compared to some of his previous runs, such as having quicker boss kills. Mug's run was yet from perfect though. For example, in the second level of Pumpkin Zone, Mug had a lot of trouble landing specific jumps in the middle of the level. Mug was comparing against previous record splits on this run, and you can see how often the time went back and forth. Nonetheless, he played well enough to secure the new record by 5 seconds. By this point, this would mark the beginning of a new speedrun war between two new prominent runners. Just 5 days after Mug, Controller Head would set a record of his own on January 31st, knocking Mug down by nearly 10 seconds. Despite having his own mistakes throughout the run, he cleaned up a lot of Mug's slop, such as missed jumps and pumpkin zone. Mug was not having any of it though. Just one day later on February 1st, he punched back with a 2731. Mug was able to have a cleaner early game through the first couple zones. He lost a bit of time trying to get the secret in macro zone, but that wouldn't matter. The rest of his run was pretty clean for the time, and gathered some more time save in each zone, ultimately beating his PB by 11 seconds. Just a week and a half later, on February 12th, Controller Head would return and get a 27-27. Just between Controller Head and Mug, the record had now been lowered by over 20 seconds. The competition was getting tighter and tighter, and in this run, Controller Head was within a few seconds of Mug's record 4 zones in. Controller Head's Mario Zone was a lot sloppier in terms of strats and power-up routing, but was ultimately able to save a lot of time with a way faster pig fight and instantly pulled ahead of Mug by a few seconds. Controller Head just had to have a clean enough Wario's Castle to secure a new record. And that's what he did. You may think that Mug would be the next person to have the record again, but that cycle would finally break. Just four days later, on February 16th, 2013, Pyraeus would smash Controller Head's record by roughly 20 seconds on Emulator with a time of 27 minutes and 7 seconds. I will not go down the controversy of allowing emulators for speedruns. All I will say is that this was officially the new best recorded time in the game while using an emulator. Pyraeus was able to shave off giant chunks of time with cleaner gameplay as well as little optimizations throughout the run. Huge shoutouts to Pyraeus for digging this previously lost run out of his archives just so I could use it in this video. Over the following days, both Controller Head and Mug would do their best to catch up with this new major record. On February 19th, Mug would get a 2713. He consistently stayed within 10 seconds of Pyraeus, but it wasn't enough to one-up him. On the other hand, on February 22nd, Controller Head would try the same thing, 
and ultimately got the record back with a 27.05. At this point, the gameplay was getting quite clean. While there were still some minor mistakes sprinkled throughout the run, the overall route between levels was becoming quite stable. Runners were getting used to when to grab specific power-ups and when to damage boost. At this point, you may have noticed how close the time was towards a new goal. The race for the first 26 minute time was on. A new month was starting and on March 1st, a familiar face would return. Mug would get ridiculously close and got a 27 minute flat time. Mug was able to save some time due to correcting some mistakes that Controller had made in his runs. Some notable mistakes come from missing the power up in Tree Zone 2 and missing fast hits on the boss in Space Zone. Playing out Wario's Castle, Mug got amazingly close to the inevitable milestone. Luckily, we wouldn't have to wait that long for the milestone to be finally achieved. Just two days later, on March 3rd, Controller Head became the first human to beat Super Mario Land 2 in under 27 minutes with this route achieving a new time of 26 minutes and 57 seconds. Controller Head saved a bunch of time against his personal best and former record with many little time saves. He was able to save a bit of time in Wario by having a faster phase 2. Based on what the timer is at when you scroll the screen here, you can get better luck in this specific phase. The goal is to scroll right when the timer's last digit is divisible by 4. Well, that's partially true. If you want to get more specific, every 8 frames, the game checks if Mario is within 32 pixels of the X direction of Wario. If this is the case, Wario will stop and give you a better phase. The end of the timer is not technically what gives you this good phase. Phase 1 optimally takes around 10 in-game seconds, which happens to mostly align up with these last timer digits. The timer is a great indicator for a better Wario phase, and ends up overlapping with having said phase. Controller Head at the time would simply call this luck due to not understanding how the Wario fight worked at the time. Nonetheless, this fast phase saved him just enough time to reach a new monumental milestone. After the new minute barrier was achieved, Piraeus would come back two days later and achieve a 26.55. Sadly, due to Twitch being a horrible video host, the highlight seems to be unviewable to this current day. Luckily for us, not long after, on March 10th, Mug would return yet again and smash the record with a 26.50. Mug had many time saves against Controller Head and Piraeus. He had way quicker hits than the space boss, and had a slightly cleaner pumpkin zone. Mug also saved a bit of extra time in Mario zone. All of this time save would prove to be useful, because nerves seemed to have gotten the best of him, and he made a lot of minor mistakes with missing jumps. Nonetheless, he was still able to clutch out the run and be on the top yet again. Give it another couple weeks, and this game had another breath of life. If you thought there was somehow not enough 2013 records yet, then boy do I have some more for you. On March 21st, a new player hit the scene by the name Laplacier. He would come and narrowly beat the record by just a second with a 26.49. The biggest difference of these runs being that he played the zones in a different order. Instead of visiting space after the tree zone, Laplacier decided to play Turtle Zone next. He would continue to do a completely different route by next going to Mario Zone, then Pumpkin, then Macro, and would ultimately finish up with Space Zone. Before moving on, there was a huge factor to worry about throughout the run that Laplacier started doing. This involved your enemy kill count. Throughout the game, you can constantly see how many enemies you killed on the bottom of the screen. If you hit 100 enemy kills, a star will end up spawning on the screen. Runners have taken advantage of this and have routed killing enemies at specific times in order to reach 100 kills at the most desired time. Runners have made it so that by the time they enter Wario's castle, 
they have 99 kills. After killing the first ball in Wario, runners collect the star. This allows them to instantly kill the balls in the next couple of phases and saves a decent bit of time. This new record wouldn't last for quite long, because on March 22nd, Piraeus would return one more time with another emulator record. He beat the record by roughly 6 seconds with a 2644. He used the same route as will place here. By the time this run was done, the phases in Wario were understood more than previously before, and Piraeus intentionally waited for the timer to go down to 760 in order to get a good phase 2 in the fight. This ending was good enough for Piraeus to be the king in the game once more. Well, Placier was not going down that easy though. Just a couple days later, on March 24th, he did the exact same thing as before and beat the record by roughly a second with a 2643. He saved a lot of time against his previous record by having a faster squid fight, and even though he lost a lot of time during the run, he brought the run back with a really strong Wario Castle. After a couple months of going back and forth, believe it or not, Mug was not quite ready to call it quits. Just three days after Piraeus, and a day after it will place here, he would take back the record again and lower the time by another second with a 2642. This run went back to the zone route that had been used for quite a while previously. Mug had a way cleaner ending in comparison to his previous PB, and ultimately shaved off 7 seconds off the time. This was just enough to get the record back. The tradition of instantly trading records back and forth wasn't over. Just five days later, on March 30th, Oplacier would come back yet again with a 2640. Against his personal best, he had a cleaner tree zone, a way faster Tatanga fight, and a better turtle zone. He also had a pretty sloppy Wario castle. He missed a mushroom that he wanted to grab later in the level, but luckily, he accumulated so much time saved during the run that it was still fast enough to be both a new personal best and a world record. Before moving on to more records, let us detour to talk about a new discovery. On March 26, Piraeus posted a video on how to save a couple seconds in Tree Zone by grabbing a flower in the last Tree Zone level in a fast manner. This would lead to the route being used by future runners and also meant that Turtle Zone after Tree Zone was not an option anymore due to not having the bunny ears. Going back to actual runs, at this point you may expect Mug to come back and take the record for the millionth time, and you'd be exactly right. Saving just enough time throughout his run, Mug was able to just barely get on top by beating the record by roughly a tenth of a second. The record had been constantly beaten by around a second, but not only a tenth of a second. This would end up being Mug's last record in the game, but it was quite a crazy record to end on. Mug seemed to have put the entire game to rest for a bit. That wouldn't be it for 2013 though. On October 2nd of 2013, Oplacier would take his last shot at the game and pulled out a 2638, finally having a record improvement of more than a second. It's worthy to note that by this point, Oplacier was doing the same route as everyone else and went to Space Zone after finishing Tree. Having really good gameplay throughout all the zones with minimal mistakes, as well as having a really fast Wario's Castle, Oplacier was able to get the first time under the 2640 range. This run would ultimately silence the game for a while. The rest of 2013 was quiet, and all of 2014 seemed to be the same. There may have not been any world record activity in 2014, but unbeknownst to some, a new player by the name of Oh Deer was slowly rising. By the end of 2014, he had a 27 minute time in the category, and by May of 2015, we get his first 26 minute time by just under a second. A few months later, Deer would get closer and closer and was within 5 seconds of record by September. At this point, it was inevitable that Deer would be the next top player. On November 1st, Deer would just barely beat the record and got a 
This was a record improvement by roughly a third of a second. He was able to stay within, or even at some points, ahead by a full second against the record. Entering Wario's castle, he was just barely ahead of the previous record, and was able to have just a good enough castle to just barely snag the record. Oh dear was now the new king of Super Mario Land 2. Before we continue the story with Deer, there are a few things about the game that I should probably explain at this point. The controls in this game are quite interesting, and to the casual viewer, they may not realize much. First, if you hold the up button while jumping, you get way more height while standing still. This is useful for making specific jumps in vertical sections of levels. You can get an even higher jump than this though, dubbed as the super jump, if you let go of jump right before you reach the maximum height of your jump, you will go even higher. The super jump is quite useful and is used throughout the run. Another thing to talk about is swimming in the water. Whenever you enter the water, it's based on a frame counter in the game, but as a human, it feels like complete luck whether you get an optimal swimming speed or not. Sometimes you just don't swim as fast. You can manipulate your swimming speed by briefly touching the ground, or by jumping out of the water and going back in. This is why you may see some weird water movement in runs. Most likely, runners are trying to get an optimal swimming speed. One more thing about Mario's mechanics as well. If you aren't holding run, and you walk off a ledge, you will fall faster. If you hold run instead, he will briefly float. To optimize the run, runners try to release their run button as late as possible before going off ledges. Sorry if I keep rambling on, but there's one more detail I have to talk about. The very last note I want to make is that besides Wario, there's another boss to worry about, the witch fight at the end of Pumpkin Zone. This is the one zone boss that has a bit of randomness to it. Watching runs, you may have noticed that the witch's spawns have varied between each runner. Which side the witch spawns on for each phase is based on the Game Boy's hardware timer and is very hard to predict. I will include a paste bin by Lightbulb Sun in the description that breaks down this code, as well as the chances for what kind of fight you may get. Just a month later, on December 4th, Shori Upith would come out of the woodworks and beat Deer with a time of 2637.6, beating Deer by a third of a second. Entering Mario's castle, Shori was just far enough ahead that if they had just good enough of a castle, they could barely beat Deer. And that's exactly what happened. It's quite crazy that the records were getting quite this tight, but with this run's length and all the variables in between, it was hard to get all that time save in one perfect run. Shori would continue to do more record attempts, but would not achieve another best time. Later in the month on December 23rd though, Oh Deer would return to claim his title and got a 2634, finally beating the record by a sizable amount again. Optimizing levels bit by bit, Deer was ahead by a full second after leaving space zone. Deer was able to save another second with a smoother pumpkin zone as well, and after leaving turtle zone, Deer was roughly 5 seconds ahead of Shori. He lost a bit of that time afterwards in Mario zone, but was able to get a gold after the 3 pig fight. Deer noted that his biggest time saves during the run were in the Tatanga fight, in the castle, and turtle zone 3. Nonetheless, Deer was able to wrap up his run with a decent Wario and finally had the record back within the same month. Deer was not quite done though. It may have taken nearly a year, but on October 22nd of 2016, Deer would finally return and beat the record by just over a second. While doing D-Rust practice for a marathon run, Deer was able to break his time once more. He had a few minor bonks and slowdowns, but overall, it was a pretty good run. Just a few months later, on January 13th, 2017, Deer would do the unthinkable and beat the record one more time, but this time in a speedrun race. A race is where you do a no reset attempt versus other runners to see who gets the best time. 
casually pulling out a record during one of these is pretty insane on its own. Notable mistakes during the run was slowing down slightly by touching the gel in Tree Zone 2, having a slight slow secret in Macro Zone, bleeding a bit of time throughout Pumpkin Zone, and having a slightly slow kill in one of the pigs. Outside of these mistakes, the run still had more time saves. He had a really clean Turtle Zone ending, and his Wario's Castle gave him the first time under 26 minutes and 30 seconds. No one else seemed to be in sight, and a few months later on May 25th, Deer would return again and beat his record by less than half a second. Throughout the first few zones, Deer would clean up a lot of his former time loss and was roughly 4 seconds ahead, halfway through the run. Deer would end up losing a bit of time at the end of Turtle Zone by failing a jump and briefly landing in the water. After this, he was still a couple seconds ahead. He lost a little more time in Mario Zone and had a slightly sloppy Wario Castle. This was still good enough to just barely beat the record. Another couple months would go by again, and finally on September 27th, Deer would improve and get a 26-28, this time beating the record by just under a second. For the first stretch of the run, he had been tied with record until he lost a slight amount of time from having a slower fight in Space Zone. After this, he was able to consistently play within a second of his time. He didn't have the best luck in the witch fight, but he ended up having a great octopus fight. This allowed him to pull back ahead of the record. He was also able to save some time in Mario Zone that his previous run had lost. He sadly lost a lot of that time save due to struggling with fast kills in the pig fight. At this point, he was only a fraction of a second ahead of record. His previous time had a bad Wario Castle though, and all he had to do was play better. His first half was way cleaner, and didn't make any mistakes until he missed the star grab after reaching 100 kills on his enemy counter. He was able to quickly recover, and got a 7.68 timer on the Wario cycle, which led to a good fight. This was better enough of a castle to get him the record still by just under a second. This run would actually be it for 2017, but Deer still wasn't done. On April 18th of 2018, Deer would return again, and this time beat the record by just over a second with a 26-27. In the comments of this run, Deer explained that his record felt like the opposite of his previous run. He had a mediocre early game, but had a stronger finish. All the way into Turtle Zone, he was roughly 2 seconds behind record. Having a way better Mario Zone and Pig Fight, he was finally able to pull ahead of record. Just like before, he had an awesome beginning to Wario's Castle, and this time did not miss the star. This allowed him to get a 770 Phase 2 cycle, and was just enough to beat his previous best by over a second. By this point, Deer was clearly the top runner in the game. His previous competitors hadn't done much since, and a couple of newcomers had achieved top 3 times, but no one seemed to want to best Deer yet. If you looked at just the leaderboards, Super Mario Land 2 seemed to go pretty quiet. 2018 breezed by, and 2019 followed suit. This wasn't quite the case though. Behind the scenes, runners such as Deer and Mario Legend Darbian were working on different routes and minor optimizations. A major game changer for runs of the game would be the development of the practice ROM by Lightbulb Sun. Due to better practice conditions, rapid improvement not seen before would occur. Lightbulb Sun would also make a separate practice ROM just for the Tatanga fight, and would delve into the game's code to help develop further strats. Slash Infinity, who has developed a randomizer and has had records in the game, would also add input for newer lag strats. For the sake of video length, I cut out a lot of the behind the scenes specifics, but if you would like to hear more about these improvements from Odeer, I have included his explanation in a pastebin below. Rewinding back to 2017 quickly, Mario Legend Darbian would pick up Super Mario Land 2 as a speedrun for the 12 hour challenge. The 12 hour challenge is a popular event among speedrunners where a player learns a new speedrun to see how quickly they can improve within the span of 12 hours. Generally these are done over the course of a weekend. 
By the end of this challenge, Darbian would achieve a time of 27.35, just around a minute slower than the record at the time. It wouldn't be until mid-2020 that Darbian would return and push his times even further. On May 19th, he would achieve a 26.31 time, which would secure him second place on the leaderboard. Darbian would keep doing runs, and just four days later, on May 23rd, he would beat Gear by just a tenth of a second and became the official world record holder of the category. Darb was able to save just a little bit of time throughout the run, and by the end of Mario Zone, he was on a 26-27 pace. It was just barely enough to edge out the record. He sadly could not get the optimal 770 Wario phase, but a 68 was just enough to barely beat Deer. If you know anything about Darbian though, then strap in. We are not even close to done. On June 1st, Darb would improve yet again with a more sizable time cut of 2627.1, saving nearly half a second overall. Throughout the run, his pace went back and forth. He was able to consistently be between tied and a second ahead. By the end of Mario Zone, he was just a tenth of a second ahead of record. He missed the optimal Wario timing again, but his performance was still good enough to beat the record yet again. Not taking any breaks, on June 3rd, Darb would achieve a larger time cut with a 26.25.5. This time, he was able to accumulate a second of time save from having a better tree zone. He sadly lost all that time by having a bad fight at the end of Space Zone. He eventually was able to pull back ahead by having a cleaner Pumpkin Zone 1, and also achieved a gold split on Pumpkin 3. His spawns in the Witch fight did not go his way though, and pulled him back behind. He wasn't able to pull back ahead again until getting yet another gold in Turtle 3, and then Mario 1. Having a really clean Mario zone, he stayed a full second ahead of record, and had a cleaner end to Wario's castle, which saved him over a second and a half. You may think that I'm going to simply say that Dar beat it yet again, but you would be wrong. After two and a half years, Deer would rise in the category yet again and finally reclaim the record on June 8th with a 26-24, beating Darb by over a second. His first major time save was having a faster ending to Space Zone. Darb had a slow fight, but Deer was really quick. This alone put him a second ahead. Deer's next major time save was in Turtle Zone 2. Due to swimming variables, as well as the tight platforming over a long level, there was a lot of time to collect here. Deer was over 3 seconds ahead after leaving the level. He sadly lost a chunk of that time due to slowing down before the Octopus boss, but was still a couple seconds ahead. Having a good enough Mario zone, Deer was still looking to be on a great pace for record. With a good Wario castle, 4.5 years later, Deer was still on top in the game. For the first time in a bit, the game went quiet for a few weeks. During this time though, Darbian was going to work. On July 3rd, Darb would finally pull back and beat Deer with a 26-23.9. Darb saved a lot of time against his PB by getting a better space boss this time. He was able to keep his lead until Pumpkin 1, where he had trouble jumping and went back in the red. He also had bad luck in the witch fight and bled even more time. This run wasn't looking too hot, after he lost even more time in Turtle Zone. He was able to pull it back though after having an amazing Turtle 3. He was now ahead again. He kept this lead until Mario Zone 3, where he missed grabbing the bunny power up right away. At this point, he had to have an amazing Mario Castle just to nearly tie and maybe beat the record. He was able to play well enough to get the 770 Wario cycle and save just enough time to barely steal the record again. Clearly there was a lot of time to save in that run, and if you know Darb well enough, you know he wasn't going to end on that note. Just a week later on July 11th, he would return one more time and get a 26-23.2, beating his time by over half a second. He initially lost a bit of time by bonking in Tree Zone 4, and lost a bit more by having a slow secret in Macro Zone. He decided to keep going anyways though. There was a lot of time to save later in the run. He already pulled back ahead after Pumpkin Zone 1, and had a better Witch fight which gave him a full second lead against Record. He lost a bit of time due to a sloppy Turtle Zone 1, 
and lost even more from a failed landing in Turtle 3. His Mario zone in this record was great though. He was able to get through the zone unscathed and was on a decent pace entering the castle. He yet again got a 770 Wario phase and finished out with a new personal best as well as a new world record. At this point, this seemed to be quite an awesome time, and would mark the end of the Darbian era. In quite a similar fashion to the original Super Mario Land, there was a new player that was quickly emerging. Starting in mid-2020, Adam Ferrari 64 would pick up Super Mario Land 2, and by the end of June, had already achieved a top 10 time. On July 1st, he already had a top 3 time. Finally, on the 16th, Adam would beat Darbian by over a full second with a 26.21.9. You may realize that his run was actually under 26 minutes. The reason why is due to the fact that he is running on the original Super Game Boy. The original Super Game Boy runs 2.4% faster than the original hardware. Most other runners run on the Super Game Boy 2 to avoid this issue. The second revision fixed this problem by incorporating a proper clock speed. Runners are still allowed to use the original model, but since the clock speed is consistently faster, the run is multiplied by the sped up percentage to get a proper time. Adam did lose bits of time during the run, such as having trouble with good water sections in the pumpkin zone, but overall was able to keep up with record. Adam ended with a great Wario and had a 770 phase, and with readjusted timing, became the new record holder of Super Mario Land 2. Having been pushed down to third place, Gear was determined to rise once again. Four days later, on July 20th, he would push the record by another second with a 2620.8. Against his previous time, Gear saved a lot at the beginning of Macro Zone. Gear lost a chunk entering Turtle Zone, but pulled back with more time save by the end. Mario Zone continued this trend with Deer saving just enough time to pull ahead of Adam. Deer finally had a clean final castle with a 770 cycle, which led him to being the king of the game once more. Over four and a half years later, Deer had managed to stay at the top at the end of the day. If you know anything about Adam though, you would know that he never stops. Just days after Deer's record, Adam was already doing more attempts to steal the record back. On July 25th, Adam would get a run that looked really promising. Adam was able to squeeze ahead of Deer's run, and by Turtle Zone, was ahead of his personal best by 2 seconds. In the middle of Mario Zone 1, Adam had trouble entering a pipe and missed a jump 3 times. Being visibly upset, Adam assumed that the run was not good enough anymore. Adam refused to look at his splits and kept assuming he was in the red. Despite making tiny mistakes, he managed to stay ahead entering Wario's castle. He got a 770 Wario cycle, and with a clean ending, managed to beat the record by half a second with a 2620.2 when converted to proper timing. After this run, the activity during the busy month of July would end. This did not mean that Adam was anywhere close to done though. Adam would come back and do more record attempts at the end of August, and August 31st in particular is a night to remember. Adam started off the night with a run that had a promising beginning. He had a sloppy end in Space 2 with Tatanga, but with a good enough macro zone, Adam put himself back on pace. Adam would keep this up until he made a minor mistake and lost his power up in Pumpkin 4. Nonetheless, it was very minor in the grand scheme of things and was still within a second of record. In Turtle Zone 2, Adam made tiny mistakes during the level, but had really lucky swim speeds and ended up getting a gold. Keeping up the pace, he was able to be around a second ahead leaving the zone. His Mario zone was just as good, and still kept his pace by a second, entering Wario's castle. Due to making a minor mistake in said castle, he lost an in-game second which made the optimal Wario cycle harder to achieve, but with a really good star grab he still managed to get the 770 cycle. 
Sadly, Adam mistimed the very last Wario hit that ends the run. He still squeezed out a new record by a tenth of a second with a 2620.1. Just three attempts later, Adam had another run with a clean beginning, and this time had a cleaner Tatanga fight as well. Following up the fight, Adam also had a really clean ending to the secret and macro zone. This put him roughly half a second ahead of record. Pumpkin Zone wasn't the worst as well, until the pattern and the witch fight threw him off and lost slight time. Even after this, he was still just barely ahead. The swimming luck in Turtle Zone went in his favor just like before, and put him a second ahead entering the final zone. Adam had a cleaner Mario Zone 1, which saved him half a second. With a clean end to the zone, Adam was still decently ahead at this point. Adam sadly missed a jump in the first room, scraped in the second room, and failed a jump in the following room. But if he had a really clean ending, he could still just barely beat the record. Adam still barely got a 768 Wario cycle, which led to him being fast enough to barely beat the record that he had just previously set that night. When retimed, his time was a 2620.0. This was a tenth of a second improvement, just like before. Before I slow down though, let's fast forward 5 attempts later and talk about one more run from this session. Like before, Adam had a clean tree zone, and in the Tatanga fight, Adam was able to release B at the right time in order to hit the boss instantly while not losing Flower. This put him on his best pace ever out of the fight, and was over half a second ahead entering Macro Zone. Having an even cleaner Macro 1 secret exit, Adam was now a full second ahead at this point. He was able to keep this lead out of Macro Zone, and with good luck in the Witch fight, was over a second and a half ahead exiting Pumpkin Zone. In Turtle Zone, Adam made minor mistakes, and the luck in water did not help. Fortunately, he was so far ahead entering the zone, he was still just barely ahead of record after making these mistakes. Adam was able to bounce back with a very clean Mario zone, and was half a second ahead entering Wario's castle. If you remember his previous record he just set, he lost a lot of time in that castle. Ultimately, Adam could beat this record by well over a second, and that's exactly what he did. This time he avoided bonking and achieved a 770 Wario cycle. Just having a couple of rooms left, Adam successfully nailed all the Wario hits this time, and smashed the record by a second and a half with a 2618.6. This was a perfect ending to debatably the busiest day in this category. Adam was clearly a force to be reckoned with in the game, and put himself quite ahead of the competition. With Adam having achieved the last four records in the game, he seemed pretty unstoppable. While Adam did take a mini break in the category, by mid-September he was already back. On September 17th, he would once again have a run with a really clean beginning. Just like his previous run, he had a really good Tatanga fight. Adam also had a clean pumpkin zone and a good enough turtle zone. With a good Mario zone, Adam was once again on an amazing pace, this time ahead by one second, just like his previous run. Entering Wario's castle, he had a couple bonks but still barely squeezed out a 770 cycle. Being in complete shock, Adam smashed the record once again with a 2616.4. This time his splits were more accurate due to now running on Super Game Boy 2. Twice in a row now, Adam had beat the record by over a second. Thinking Adam was anywhere close to done would be a mistake. Just over a week later on September 26, Adam would have a run that lost a slight amount of time in Space Zone, but saved it back with a really fast Satanga fight. Adam had also lost some time in Macro 1, but was able to keep pace and pulled himself right next to the record again with a gold split in Pumpkin 2. Sadly, Adam got unlucky in the Witch fight, but the run was still good enough to work with. Adam saved some time back in Turtle 1 by achieving less lag, and while his Turtle 2 had some unlucky swimming sections, it wasn't the worst at all. Entering Mario Zone, Adam was still just barely behind and had enough time saved to pull back. He was able to stay neck and neck with the record until the pig fight, where he had trouble getting a quick kill on one of them. If Adam wanted to beat the record, he had to make no mistakes in Mario's castle. 
This time he didn't bonk like his previous record did, and got a high 770 Wario cycle. With a perfect ending, Adam just barely crushed his own record by a tenth of a second with a 2616.3. While Adam's constant improvements were crazy enough, there was clearly still more time to be saved. Adam lost a bunch of time in both the Witch Fight and Pig Fight. Two days later on September 28th, Adam would return one more time having a run with a good tree and space zone. Adam kept this pace throughout Pumpkin Zone and this time had good luck in the Witch Fight. He was able to stay pretty close to the record during the run and also had a clean Pig Fight. Having cleaner boss fights than before, Adam was just barely ahead entering the castle. Adam had a decent enough castle and was good enough to improve the record by a tenth of a second again with a 2616.2. With Adam in the picture though, this story still wasn't over yet. The very next attempt, Adam would pull out another run. Adam decided to run against his previous record that was a tenth of a second slower due to preferring the splits. Adam passed Turtle Zone still being half a second ahead, and kept up that same speed in Mario Zone. He even got a gold in the last two levels, ending with a clean pig fight. This put him a full second ahead of record, which he had just achieved in the attempt right before this. He sadly missed a super jump in Wario's castle, but he still squeezed out a 770 just like his last record. His final split was still good enough to beat the record by a second with a 2615.3. This was now the second time that Adam had set multiple records in one session. This night was even crazier due to the fact that these two records were set on back-to-back -back runs. Adam was clearly a powerhouse of a speedrunner, and was still safely the king of modern Super Mario Land 2 speedrunning. With Adam getting never-ending records in this game, this story is sadly getting closer to the end. Let's talk about Adam's last, and as of making this, still current record in any percent glitchless. On October 8th of 2020, on attempt number 1967, Adam will pull out yet another impressive run. Let's analyze this run zone by zone. Huge shoutouts to Adam for taking the time to walk me through his current record. Everything I say in the following section is purely thanks to him. Starting off with Tree Zone, this zone is generally standard across records. One level Adam and I wanted to talk about though was Tree Zone 4. This level has a few key points for reducing lag. At the beginning of the stage, you will see Adam fly high under this question mark block to spawn the first Paragoomba higher, which allows you to jump on them. He also fireballs a couple of Goombas at the end in a specific way to reduce lag. As for the power-up grab for the boss, it involves a tricky strategy where you have to jump into this tight area with multiple blocks. In order to go fast here while grabbing said power-up, to spin jump, you have to hold down while being airborne but let go of down after you hit the next block with your head. To summarize this level, lag reduction and scary platforming. Moving to Space Zone, the bulk of knowledge here is in regards to the Tatanga fight. The performance in the fight is decided by how many times you have to stomp them. Adam said there is a primarily tool assisted strat where you can kill them with only balls and no stomps, but this is not realistic for humans at all. What humans can do, though, is get 4 shots during Tatanga's stun window. You only need to stomp them once for a 1 cycle fight. If you get a quick stomp, it is referred to as an eagle. If you can keep your power up as well, Adam calls this a super eagle. If you get 2 or 3 shots on the boss before losing fire, you need to stomp him twice. This is a 2 cycle fight and loses roughly a second and a half over the previous strategy. If you can get a stomp first try, and proceed to stomp again without losing a mushroom, it is called a par. What you need to know is that ideally you want to get an eagle, but a birdie is also not bad. In the current record, Adam gets a birdie. Moving on to Macro Zone, Adam stated that the end of Macro 1 is one of the hardest parts of the run. This is why many records were previously slow here. 
to get the optimal block breaks to enter the pipe, you need a frame perfect shot for the second block. It's not too hard to do a standard pipe strategy here, but optimizing it can be quite hard due to factors like jump height and block hits. Adam was not able to have a good ending here, which led to the biggest time loss in Adam's run. He lost time due to the ending and the bonk following. Adam says he is roughly 75% consistent at the optimal block breaking and entering, but it requires a lot of practice and muscle memory. Shifting over to Pumpkin Zone, Adam lost less than half a second in the third level by missing a quick drop here. Besides that, the rest of the run was pretty standard. Moving to Pumpkin 4, the Witch Fight can be faster or slower based on how close you cut the fight. You want to try to cut it close, but going too early can result in taking damage and killing the run. This record's Witch Fight was pretty standard overall. Swimming into Turtle Zone, Stage 2 was really awesome. Adam said it was not perfect, but he had lucky lag reduction in the area where he waits for the spike. The lag here is generally pretty random. The gameplay was also great, but can still be improved with better lag by half a second. After getting this record, Deer discovered that flying over water does not lose time to fast swim, which reduces RNG factors. Adam says that this is one of his strongest splits and gives him a great opportunity to get a new record. In the Turtle Zone 3 fight, Adam refers to not doing the nasty, once beating the boss in his record. The nasty is a term dubbed by Darbian that refers to a faster way to grab the power up in the level. Looking at Adam's previous record, we can watch it back and see what it looks like. It saves just under half a second compared to what Adam's latest record did. He opted out of the time save due to knowing that he could still improve the record without going for it. Stepping to the final stretch that is Mario Zone, Adam's zone here was pretty fast. He says that he can technically save time in Zone 1 if you optimize it like crazy, and also can save time in Zones 3 and 4 due to a faster route that both Controller Head and Darbian helped come up with. This would save maybe a few tenths of a second at most. Adam states that going for the faster route would be scary due to not having a power-up. He does say though that it is quite consistent and is a realistic future time save. Overall, Adam says that there's a good 3 seconds or more to save, but that is easier said than done. Finishing up at the castle, Adam's castle in this run was pretty amazing. The only way he says he can save time is by doing tool assisted strategies where you do a faster hit on phase 1 of Wario that is called Throne Skip, and also perform a super risky phase 2 kill with 771 or 72 on the timer where you go up and hit Wario on the ceiling. Adam has done a segmented run that saved a second and a half over record, but it is not realistic for the end of a full run at all. It is safe to say that Adam's castle here is as good as it gets when talking about realistic gameplay. Before ending, I do want to quickly talk about one more thing. The game can be beaten even faster than what I have previously talked about. Ever since 2012, there has been a credit warp route for this game. One of the first notable completions of this is Mug's 340 time from September of 2012. As of making this, Odeer has the record with an impressive time of 2 minutes and 42 seconds. Maybe this category can be talked about in a future video. Whether the future is dictated by Adam, Deer, or a currently unknown player, it's safe to say that the game is tightly optimized, but not quite dead yet. With many time saves to be found, credits were being done, as well as possible future developments, who knows where this game will go. All we can say is, all the previously mentioned runners are part of a never-ending story that will constantly progress. Thank you specifically to Adam Ferrari and Oh Dear for looking through the script of this project, and special shoutouts to Piraeus for digging through private world record footage. I also want to specifically thank the entire Super Mario Land 2 community and their Discord that showed a lot of support and help on this video. Thank you so much for watching.